Right now I'm in southern Arizona at the U.S.-Mexico border and right behind me on the other side of this fence is the Colorado River or at least where the Colorado River should be. Water hasn't regularly reached this far since the 1960s. On its way from the Colorado Rockies to, well, here, the Colorado River travels through 11 national parks and countless state and local parks. And today we're gonna head a few miles north and visit the last parks on the Colorado River. Hey everyone, Steve here. So we are in the southwestern corner of Arizona and we wanted to get some footage of the dry Colorado Riverbed without actually crossing the border into Mexico. But with the newer border fencing that's gone up over the last few years, there isn't really a great place to see it, we've learned. So let's get out of here and start heading north. Right behind me is the Morelos Dam, which is the last dam on the Colorado River. And so for all intents and purposes, it's the current end of the river as not much water makes it past the dam to go further downstream. All the water from here gets diverted into Mexico. So the Morelos Dam was built in 1950. And I mentioned earlier that the Colorado River hasn't regularly reached the ocean since the 1960s. But I did want to mention that in 2014, it did reach the ocean again for a few weeks when a gate was opened on the dam to do what was called a pulse flow as kind of an experiment to see what would happen to the environment if water was reintroduced to the area. We are a bit north of the dam now, and where it looks like the border fence ends here, we're actually looking at a corner and the fence turns towards the west. I just wanted to point this out because on the other side of the fence is the northernmost point in Mexico. Anyway, let's head to the parks now before we cook in this heat. So we're at the Colorado River State Historic Park, which is part of the Yuma Crossing National Heritage Area. The Yuma Crossing National Heritage Area encompasses several parks, including the Wetlands Park, the Colorado River State Historic Park, and the Gateway Park, which we'll be checking out today. The Colorado River State Historic Park was formerly known as the Yuma Crossing State Historic Park, then the Yuma Quartermaster Depot State Historic Park, before the change to its current name in 2013. This park is on the grounds of the former Yuma Quartermaster Depot, which was established by the U.S. Army in 1864. For much of the 18th and early 19th century, Yuma was the only crossing point for travelers along the lower Colorado River. So the Quartermaster Depot was an important supply point, with supplies from the depot being shipped throughout the Southwest. With the opening of the Southern Pacific Railroad in the 1870s, the depot's importance was reduced and it closed in 1880. This park has a number of historical exhibits and it's pretty interesting to walk around, but I think the most striking thing here is seeing just how much the Colorado River has changed over the last century. This depot was built on the river and now it isn't that close. This concrete tower at the park was a Colorado River gauging station where the United States Geological Society measured river data including elevation and volume. It was built in 1934, and by 1964 it could no longer be used. Just look how far it is from the river now. These two pictures in the visitor center, taken from the same spot in 1916 and in 2013, really show the change in the river. Now we are in West Wetlands Park. All of the parks in the Yuma Crossing National Heritage Area are connected by trails, so you can walk or bike between them, though this one is about a mile away from the others. The park is 110 acres in size and has this large pond that is apparently stocked with fish, though we didn't see any on our visit, nor did we see anyone fishing. Hidden away in the western corner of the park, is a monument to the Army of the West and Mormon Battalion that did the longest sustained march in United States military history. Along the statue's base, there's information on the march and it also lists the name of every soldier that was a member of the unit. The park also has things like a disc golf course and a boat ramp for the river, but the real gem here, especially if you have kids, is the Stuart Vincent Wolf Creative Playground. The playground is built to look like a castle 
and was opened in 2015 after the original was burned down in 2014. The playground is absolutely crazy with all sorts of different levels and things to climb on and places to explore and slides and the slide even ends in a dragon's mouth. I know I would have loved this when I was a kid. In between West Wetlands and the rest of the parks in the Heritage Area, you'll find downtown Yuma with a bunch of historic buildings and a number of restaurants, bars, and shops. Downtown Yuma isn't part of the parks, but if you do have time, it is worth a stop as it's pretty fun to walk around and check out all the historic buildings. East of the Colorado River State Historic Park is the Yuma Territorial Prison State Historic Park. The prison overlooks the Colorado River and opened in 1876. According to the park, the prisoners helped build the prison. It was in use for 33 years until it was closed for overcrowding. The prison and the Colorado River State Historic Park both have entrance fees, and if you can only pick one to see, I do recommend the prison as I think it's more interesting, but it really depends on your tastes. You do get a pretty good view from the guard tower at the prison too. Now we're right off Historic Highway 80 at Gateway Park, where you get a great view of the historic Ocean to Ocean Bridge. Gateway Park is the best place to get a view of the Ocean to Ocean Bridge, which was built in 1915 and was the first highway crossing of the Lower Colorado River. The bridge was part of the Ocean to Ocean Highway and later Highway 80 until a newer bridge was built in 1956. Between 1988 and 2001, the bridge was closed to vehicles, but after some rehabilitation, it reopened to autos in 2002 and is still in use today. And directly to the west is the bridge that takes Interstate 8 over the Colorado River today. As far as accessing the river, if you wanted to go for a dip or something, Gateway Park is one of the best spots. The water is pretty shallow, and an adult could easily walk across on our visit. Under the bridge though, it was deep enough for people to swing on a rope into the river. Connected to Gateway Park is the final park we're going to visit, East Wetlands Park. Directly above the park, you can see the Arizona Territorial Prison, giving you an idea how close the parks are to each other. This park is a real success story in wetlands restoration along the Colorado River. A partnership between the Heritage Area, the Kichon Indian Tribe, the City of Yuma, and the Arizona Game and Fish Department turned what was once a trash dump filled with hobo camps into a natural wetlands area that is a perfect habitat for a number of animal species, including several endangered birds. While some of the other parks focus on the human history along the river, it's great that East Wetlands Park gives you a little idea of what the Colorado River area would have looked like before we changed it. So that's our look at the last parks on the Colorado River. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and we'll see you next week.